This is Scott from KIG. It's March 14th, 2016. And we're going to do a couple of videos today to run off this Drake 4 horsepower, 4 ton air cooled chiller to get ready to ship to our, uh, our customer. This model is the Pact PACT 36S2 T4 Z as in zebra. Serial number D as in David 04K0623. 2004 unit and it's a 460 volt three phase. Our first video is going to be with the covers off. Uh, just going over some of the key components. This is the uh, well. This is our temperature controller. We'll go into that in a little bit more after we power it up. This is the P66 electronic uh, fan speed control. Um, essentially, that's a VFD working in conjunction with the condenser fan. Uh, that's what helps us uh, achieve the low ambient capability for this unit to run year-round outdoor in the cold also. Uh, it is outdoor rated weatherproof, um, as all drakes like this are from the factory. Uh, we have our <coughs> contactors in here, and they are labeled nicely actually. Uh, compressor contactor, condenser, um, tank recirculation pump system or the process pump. This is a two pump system uh, and our controller transformer here also. Uh, your main incoming power is going to come here. It is uh, 460 volt three phase. It is rotation dependent. Uh, so in this case here the condenser fan is single phase and we have two pumps. We have the uh, recirculation pump which draws off our insulated reservoir tank and then comes back up there's a shut off here too which comes back up through the body to our uh, to our heat exchanger and then we have the process pump which also draws off the tank and that discharges out to the process and comes back here where it says chilled fluid to process the best way to confirm, or the imperative way, imperative way to confirm startup uh, correct rotation is probably with this pump here, the recirculation pump. It's a two-man job. Have somebody bumping the contactor inside the control cabinet, and look back at the back of the, uh, basically at the fan, uh, the back of the motor here, or the shaft, and you want to match up with the rotation, which is embedded here on the, um, the volute or the impeller housing as I call it. <clears throat> here we have our dryer and our refrigerant circuit. Again, it's key that the, uh, uh, in the top section here with this condenser design you have to have all these top covers on to give appropriate airflow through the condenser when you are, uh, when you are running. Uh, here we have our Side glass, nice and green. What you want to see? We'll put the cover back on. Uh, our posit our solenoid positive shutoff here. Uh, this unit does have a hot gas bypass option. And that's very important to mention that uh, it's a effectively a manually adjustable one. There's a knob back here. Get around better. Uh, you shouldn't have to touch that. That's a better picture, sorry. Um, we have set that specifically for the running temperature of this unit, which is about 32 Fahrenheit. That also means you should run a 25 to 30 percent at least glycol solution in this chiller. Now this has a nice flow switch which goes off pressure differential of the fluid flow or the glycol flow. It senses the high side and the low side of the uh, glycol flow and if it doesn't uh, if there's no flow at all, that will stop the chiller. Uh, we have transducers for the pressure. These are fixed ones, okay? And those tie back into our controller, which I showed you earlier. We have a four horsepower Copeland scroll compressor here uh, and a suction accumulator which is good especially for low temperature, lower temperature applications like this to prevent sludging or sludge back to the compressor. And then we have some refrigerant Schrader valves here. Here's a pressure capillary line going back to the controller area. 
And so we're going to put the covers back on, the top covers. We do have all the covers. And those will all be on nice and tight before she uh, before she's skidded and crated up and ships out um, ships out tomorrow. So we'll come back to video number two here in a second. Thank you.